Hello everyone and welcome back to For the Minions episode 26, the weekly show where we look forward to some of the possible Paragon replacements out there. As always, we have news and updates. News, a little light on the news and updates. We got nothing for Metabuff and we got nothing for Visionary, but uh, we do have some really cool stuff for Ethereal and Predecessor is moving along quite nicely as well. After that, we're going to talk about the poll results that I, I posted. The poll was what your preferred version of Paragon was. And then we have Tech Time with Ruba, as always, where we're teaching you how to load the assets up into the Unreal Engine and play around with them yourself. Then our topic for discussion this week is the effects of sound design on overall player immersion. And then our, uh, we got our community builder this time, and uh, that's going to be it. I am your host, the one and only Mangoose. Joining me, as always, is Mandy Mal. How you doing, Mandy? I'm doing good. I was actually expecting a soccer mom joke, so I'm... <laughs> I'm proud of you. No, I'm done. I got, I got them all out of my system. <laughs> you got them all out before we started recording, so it's good. I'm doing great. We have a really special guest this time. We have a member of the Ethereal team, Mr. Tricolor Star. Why don't you introduce yourself a little bit, tell us what you do over there at Ethereal, and then you can tell us a little bit about how you got started with Paragon as well. Awesome. Uh, hi, I'm Tricolor Star. Um, I do the voices and the sound effects for Ethereal. I work with uh, voice actors. I write scripts. I do um, a lot of the sound effect processing, the voice processing. Basically, if it has audio, it's me. It's all me. Um, as for like my experience with Paragon, I was going through like a really big phase with MOBAs and MOBA type games because I really fell in love with League of Legends and I was like, there has to be more. There has to be more. So bought a PS4, played Paragon for about three or four weeks and then it shut down. So mm -hmm. <laughs> that was the one that got away. So. <laughs> Yeah, that sucks. Um, yeah, but I really loved the game. Like I really like while it was around, I really, really loved it. So I hope that we can replicate a little bit of that lightning in the bottle that we got with the original mm -hmm. Paragon with some of these uh remakes or successors, I guess. Mm-hmm. Cool. You know, uh who's your favorite hero in Paragon? Muriel. I loved Muriel. I'm a support main at heart. Um, really loved Muriel, mostly because of like <laughs> when you when you used a reversal of fortune like her ultimate it just felt really cool because you just fly out of nowhere and uh not on my watch like it just felt really cool <laughs> yeah i also liked um the countess and i uh really really liked zinx too so like yeah <laughs> oh, very good very no nice. i'm glad i'm glad to hear zinx get some love yeah <laughs> she didn't get enough love did she i no. love her personality i was so sad none of her voice lines got in the game like she was yeah. she was extremely sassy <laughs> oh, I, I don't think I've ever heard any of Zinx's voice lines. I'll have to dig those up and play a few. Yeah, yeah she sounds like a nineteen uh, fifties like uh, TV show announcer, like a game show host. Oh, really? But, but she just really hates everyone. It's <laughs> hilarious. That's awesome. I, I love really love. I think her intro was probably one of the best character intros that they ever did. It was did. so well made. Yeah, wasn't it? yeah, it was really cool. Too bad they uh, they seemed to put a lot of time into that character intro and no time into testing her out because she was broken yeah. on release in the bad way too she was i had some success with her but for the most part she was just absolutely terrible on release they buffed her they buffed her <laughs> she had a but, weird design because she was like yeah. supposed to be like this mana drain tank with some cc a lot of durability and kind of some damage so what 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 was the truth paragon what was she supposed to be <laughs> yeah but i, I don't think they her. knew yeah no it didn't sound like it <laughs> <laughs> But uh, yeah, speaking of LOL, you uh, you recently did some voice lines for LOL, right? Oh, yeah. Well, I was working on, I'm working on some new things that I can't talk about. But I do do like some fan stuff on the side with um, installable voice packs and uh, sound effect mods and stuff. Because sometimes, you know, Riot, small indie company, they, <laughs> sometimes, <laughs> they sometimes forget to put things in their own game. So yeah. sometimes I, I release like free patches to fix that stuff up because why not, right? <laughs> That's wow. awesome. That's but, um, very cool. I did some stuff for, I did some sound effects for Nico. I did some sound effects for Kale. I did a few, it was all freelance work. So unfortunately I don't actually work with the company yet, but hopefully one day once I get, you know, more experience under my belt and finish my education, then I'll be able to be a rioter. So uh -huh. you know, stay tenacious. <laughs> very right on cool. man, right on. So uh, let's move on. Uh, we don't, like I said, we don't have anything for meta buff, but uh, Let's uh let's get straight to Ethereal since we got Tricolor here and uh Tricolor brought some voice lines with him. These are voice lines that you worked on, right? And um yes. who who do you got for us today? 
Uh, we've got Noxus and we've got Malware. I included uh, six lines from each character to like give you a spread of their personality. Um, some of the some of the voice lines are attacking. Some of them are jokes. Some of them are movement. Um, Malware is have I put some of his ability lines. His abilities in game have a uh, much heavier vocoder filter over them because the enemy is hearing them. So it's supposed to be a lot more menacing and a lot. Of, I need to get the hell out of here like right now. So uh, you'll hear the difference in roboticness as we go through the lines. All right, one. Hmm. So uh, let's start off with uh, some of Noxus's lines here. Um, Your fate is sealed. Very awesome. Your fate is sealed. Dazzling. We are nothing if not luminous. So we're going to go through these one at a time here. What dazzling brilliance destiny reveals. My aura shines through dimensions. Is my armor too heavy? No. It's light. So those are very cool. And uh, if you guys don't know, Noxus is uh, one of the mages of the game. So um, it sounds like she's going to be very light based um, according to those voice lines. Uh, I'm not going to I'm not going to put you in a position, Tricolor, where you have where you have to <laughs> confirm or deny that. I'm just oh, going to speculate. I, I have permission speculate. to talk about both of them. Oh, OK. Excellent. Great. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. Tell us a little about, about oh, Noxus okay. then. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Noxus is a she's a the seer of light so like she is like not just like spiritual light based but like literal light based she can like bend the spectrum around her and project light as like physical manifestations of her power uh her chosen goddess is mara like god like mara is this being of peace and love and it, like picked her specifically and she can see through time and space and um she is trying to prevent a disease that drains magic from people. She's doing a lot of things because mm. when you see the future, you're like, there's a lot of bad crap about to happen. I have to go <laughs> fix it. Um, in game, she's like, she's a mage. She's she's like, a, I don't want to call her a hyper carry, but I can't really give much about her, like her gameplay, but she's really cool. I like her a whole lot. Um, and well, and her voice actress is named Sarah Dunham, and uh, she's actually worked with me before on League of Legends things. So, like, I, I was like, hey, you want to voice uh, this light girl? And she was like, yeah, totally. So, <laughs> <laughs> she did an everyone. awesome job. That's yeah. really good. <laughs> she's, yeah, she uh, has the fastest turnaround time of any voice actor I've ever worked with. Like, I was like, these are 200 lines for Noxus. And she was like, okay, next day, boom, here you go. And I was like, how do you do this? Like, <laughs> wow. But, uh, yeah, but wow. Noxus is really fun. Noxus is my favorite. So I, cool. I really hope that we get gameplay of her soon. It yeah. really sounds like the her lore got tied into her voice lines really well. I like that a yeah. lot. Thank so you. Let, let's, uh, let's move on to Malware. We already um, heard some voice lines for Malware on the show, but uh, these are going to be new ones. So let's go through these. Um, I'll just play these one at a time. Uh, Mandy, if you want to play them too, so you can kind of hear them. Sure. Instancing dimensional link. So that was his ability three and attacking. Enter my world. And then buff. Broadband acceleration active. We have a couple movement. This world's matter is the clay I will use to forge my own universe. We are everywhere. Did you say we? Perhaps. <laughs> <laughs> and then here's my favorite one. This is the uh, malware taunt. This is the favorite out of all the voice Ooh, lines that you, yeah, that you sent me. I love one. this one. Wipe your hard drives and find me in your thoughts. <laughs> that is so good. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Wipe your hard drive and find me in your thoughts. That is so awesome. Um, oh, man. If you guys don't know, yeah. malware is an ADC. Um, he's like a sentient computer virus that can... Just he, I, I forget all of his lore, but it's really cool. He like basically hacked into his own spirit, so he's a uh, you know corporal in our in our world now. So that's very cool. Uh, what what can you tell us uh, about malware, um, Tricolor? Uh, well, his voice actor's name is just Gilthime. Uh, doesn't go by first or last name on the internet. Does not have a website or a Twitter. But I have worked <laughs> with him 
uh, on other projects. He does a really good uh, Kha'Zix impression, if anyone knows League. But um, uh, malware is like a computer virus that can bridge the gap between the physical and the digital. So like he can infect anything, pretty much anything. And uh, when I, uh, malware kept me up at night because I was like, how am I going to make this a robot voice without making it extremely generic? and like cliche because like you know you can make a robot voice by just slapping a filter on it and calling it a day um but when i saw his design i was like he looks like a geth from mass effect like uh those, those, oh, those yeah. flashlight head guys yeah so i was like let me look up how they made that voice and i looked at, i had to I had to download a whole bunch of like extra extended universe crap about mass effect and eventually i got to the point where they were like so in order to make uh legion's voice they'd use a vocoder effect so whenever you're hearing Malware is like clicking and weird glitching mm -hmm. and stuttering. It's because there's a endless stream of like randomized vocal utterances playing underneath his voice and it's contouring and morphing the voice to that as he speaks. And uh, there's also just like some pitching down some like chorus effects and stuff. But um, I was I was like, should I go in the grotesque, like evil garbled distorted robot or should I go like GLaDOS from Portal? <laughs> So, <laughs> those are my two. Those are my two things, and uh, I submitted one pass, and my, my the guys at Ethereum were like, "Actually, can we go this way?" And I was like, "Okay, I'll go this way." And they were like, "Actually, can we go this way?" And I was like, "Okay." So listen, <laughs> <laughs> um, he has the most voice lines of any character so far. He has like his voice files like three point two gigs or some crazy shit like that. But um, yeah, he's really really fun. Uh, I can't wait to play him. I, I actually uh, he was like the first character they brought me on to do and like uh write and do sfx for and it all just kind of progressed from there i feel like he's gonna be a favorite of mine and it's probably the bow <laughs> the bow and arrow but um he's just so what a cool concept and you did an incredible job with those voice lines and the, that sound effects because that like glitchiness you're talking about is so it's like terrifying and it's just amazing you did a really good job thank you so much yeah. it's really hard like i do a lot of robot voices it's so hard to make them like glitchy but understandable i'm getting better at that like yeah. as i make more um but uh thank you guys so much <laughs> yeah if i had to sum that up i would say ominous he sounds very <laughs> ominous yeah yeah and, there, uh, i love it he makes me interested in lore, and that's hard to do because I want to know more about, <laughs> about how he came to be and what he's going to do, what, you know, oof, it's just kind of... big plans. Ooh, that's, that's so creepy. <laughs> <laughs> All right, um, and do you have anything else for uh, for Ethereal Tricolor? Uh, I know we're working on a lot of other things. We, uh, we don't really have a date for the, the pre-alpha yet. But um, we're getting really close. Like, it's starting to crunch down on me. <laughs> so I'm like, oh, uh-oh. <laughs> but um, uh, some things got swapped around. Some things got changed. But everything is coming together really, really nicely. And I really can't wait to show everyone what we got. Because um, the release skins look awesome. The the GUI looks awesome. So I just can't wait to show everyone that. <laughs> oh, right on, right on. I can't wait to see it myself. Yeah, definitely. So let's move on to Omega Studios with their project, which is Predecessor. Um, Smokey finished up with Gadget, and now he's working on Muriel. He's been streaming a lot yes. of his progress. And uh, Gadget looked... He, he made a few slight changes to Gadget, which I thought were really cool. Uh, Seek and Destroy. Uh, that's the ability where you kind of toss it out, and then it makes a cone that uh, slows people down. Um, a lot of times, the targeting for that was a little weird. So what Smokey did is, um, once you toss it out, if it looks like it's going to go too far, you can reactivate it, and it'll explode and, you know, start start um, doing its conal slowing effect thing that it does. So I think, I thought that was a really cool idea. I think that's a neat concept. It's just one of the small changes, one of the minor changes they're making to the to the heroes. So, uh, yeah, and then um, he did a lot of work with making sure that, you know, the enemy's abilities are different colored than uh, hero abilities, which was kind of a problem in the little bit of the pre-alpha that we had. So, um uh, yeah, uh, what do you guys what do you guys think? Have you guys been watching Smoky streams at all? Have you been tracking predecessor or anything? Yeah, I've been tuning in occasionally. I'm uh mm -hmm. I'm really happy with like how the game looks. Um I think that's the closest we're gonna get to like a Paragon replacement. Yeah, like a uh fill the hole, the void that it left behind. Um I did I, I like that they're adding those little quality of life changes because uh 
little little things like that can really really affect player experience so i'm glad that they're taking the time to add those little kind little like changes and fixes not necessarily buffs but like just make life easier for everybody um uh, i really like that they're, that they're adding muriel next because as we said muriel is my favorite <laughs> <laughs> i can't wait for that <laughs> Yeah, I uh, tuned into his stream today a little bit um, when he was working on Muriel, and he actually was demoing um, pretty much all of the heroes and made a, a couple of little, like you said, adjustments to some of them that all, to me, seem really great. But he's also really taking into consideration what the, um, not only what the community has to say, but his team. Like, you know, he has picked this team for a reason, and they all seem to really have good reasonings behind because a couple of, couple of people were saying that like um, Murdoch's minds look a little small and he said, look, that's changeable. We can, we can always work with that. Um, but we're kind of, there's a reasoning behind it and we're testing it and stuff like that. So I'm so happy that he's streaming again because you get those little like nuggets of knowledge of why they're doing the things they're doing through those streams. And they're really, really uh, entertaining and informative. So I highly recommend checking them out if you're not. And speaking of the team, they've officially added Ruba to the team. Ruba is now officially a part of Ameda Studios. He was um, kind of a consultant with them for a while, but now he's a full-blown member of the team. So, grats to Ruba. You, uh, if you guys don't know who Ruba is, if you've ever watched the show, you know, we do the tech time with Ruba. He obviously knows a lot about Unreal Engine and how to, how to program the Paragon assets to make them as close as to the original as possible so that's a great pickup for Ameda studios um and just you know from from the he, he's part of the for the minions team too so we're really proud of him we're really happy for him and just you know two thumbs up great job ruba <laughs> and uh, great job smoky for picking ruba up because and then um the other thing the other way you guys might recognize ruba he's been a moderator for the paragon reddit for like ever so <laughs> <laughs> yeah he's such a gem he is going to be such an asset to that team that's amazing and then uh i think that's gonna that's gonna sum it up for the news and updates for this week um and yeah unfortunately we did like i said we didn't have anything for visionary or made a buff but uh hopefully next time if you guys are interested in learning anything anything more about any of these games i'll have uh several links in the comments below that you can check out their discords youtube channels all that kind of stuff but uh, we're going to move on now to the poll results. The poll that I put out this week, I'm changing it up every week now, is the preferred version of Paragon. And the options I gave were Legacy, Monolith, and then version 42 Monolith, which was kind of the, the new card system. Um, the poll results were Legacy at 44%, Monolith at 47%, and the version 42 of Monolith at 9%. So I kind of expected Legacy to take it, but it looks like Monolith did. However, I will say that a lot of people, you know, commented in saying that they never actually got to play Legacy, so they can't really speak to Legacy. They, um, I think most of the player base only played on Monolith, and then, um, uh, I was, you might be surprised to see 9% for version 42 Monolith. There are a lot of people that did like the new card system, and for good reason, too. Um, I always talk shit about it because I didn't like it personally, but... That doesn't mean that I can't see how other people would like it. So, if you if you're surprised to see that nine percent, maybe don't be so surprised. It's it's you know, it's it's a matter of personal preference and opinion. So, I don't know. These polls are kind of fun. I like doing these polls. <clears throat> if you guys have any suggestions for polls that, that that I could do in the future, just let me know in the comments below, and we'll uh, we'll hook it up. And just make sure it's not like you know, ten to fifteen options or something like that. Try to give like <laughs> like four or five options. So with that, uh, with the poll results out of the way, let's move on to Tech Time with Ruba. What we've been doing with Tech Time is trying to teach you guys how to load the Paragon assets into the Unreal Engine. So you can just kind of horse around with them yourself and play around and maybe bring back the feels a little bit. And uh, we're going to go ahead and get into that right now. So uh, enjoy Tech Time. We'll be back. Welcome back to Tech Time, everyone. We're going to pick right up where we left off last week with our ongoing process of bringing you in back to life in the Unreal Engine. There we go. Okay, nice. So next thing, and this can get a bit confusing um, to, to, to move around. If you go up to the top where it says Yen Animation Blueprint, Anim Graph, Ground Locomotion, you click on the button that says um, Ground Locomotion. Yep, and that'll take us back up a level. Okay, so um, our entry point is we start and we're idle. This is like your where do I begin? Imagine this is like a maze. 
that's the first point we're going to go. So we're going to go into Idol, and there's two different places that we can go um, as we start moving around. So the first one is you see there's an arrow that moves from Idol to Jog Start. Okay. okay. Uh, and that's known as a conduit, and that's basically go from this type of animation to this one. And if you see the little um, button in the middle of the line, the one that's got the two arrows back and forth, this is um, your transition rule. So what this says is this is basically, if this stuff happens, go from idle to jog start. Um, so for this one, it's just saying if your speed is greater than zero, so you're not stationary, and you're not in the air, so you're not jumping, and you uh, are not accelerating, you can go, wait, not accelerating. Oh no, sorry. I can't read. I went there. It says, uh, double click it and you can go into it. It says not in the air and is accelerating. So this is the logic that kind of controls um, when we go from idle into to, to, to the jog start. And the jog start is the, the animation where it's like you start moving. You're not running yet, but you're kind of like, it's when you like you, you put your weight into your move and you start moving. And what this will say is, so if our speed, which is um, uh, as a variable, so that's a, that's a float number that um, we have on our character. So that basically says, how fast am I going? If that's greater than zero, then it means we're moving. So if that's happening, and then we're not in the air, so you see where it says as an air, that is something that another variable, this time the red ones are known as booleans. So that's like true or false. So if we're not in the air and we're accelerating and our speed's greater than zero, we can go from idle into jog start. And that's all this does. Um, and for example, if you wanted one where you're in the air, you'd have, am I in the air and not moving? And then it would just do the jump, um, stuff like that. Okay. Um, so this is kind of your logic. So if we go back to ground locomotion um, and go into jog start this time, Mm -hmm. Double click on it or? D double click on it, yep. Okay, so here um, is where the problems start. So this is a, uh, this is the, the kind of the run. And the problem we have here is that it's going to play jog forward start regardless of the direction we're going in. So there's nothing actually here in terms of the logic that says if you're going left, play left. If you go to um, the right, the asset browser where all the, the animations are, and then filter, if you type start, I think that's the best way to do it, start. Here we go. This will give you all of your um, like different animations. So if you double click and jog forward start. Okay, so you see that that's Yin when she kicks her feet off and move forward. So you can kind of you can see where it loops, where she kind of pushes forward. If you close that and then go into um, the, I don't know, pick, pick, pick a different one, like jog backwards start or left start or right start. You'll see now, like, those are the different animations that we've got. So they're the different parts. What we have to do is we have to be able to tell the game, this is the way I'm going and this is the direction I'm moving. Now, um... I don't know if it, ha if it comes in Yin, it comes in some of the assets. Can you get rid of where it says star on the right and instead um, just type in jog? And then scroll down, I think I see it. Please, 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 please. Oh, keep going. Oh, epic. Uh, should, I pick uh, the should I have picked a different hero? No, it's fine, we can fix it. Uh, that's just going to be a bit more work. Um, basically, I'll, I'll explain what these are anyway. So if you double click on jog forward slope lean, I'm going to quickly, very quickly explain what these are before we build it. Um, so yeah, double click on it. Okay. Um, and I don't know if you can see it on your screen, but there should be below that box, there should be um, a panel. You might, have, you might have to make that window smaller so we can see it. That's probably a bit too small. There we go. It's hiding right what in the middle of your do? screen. Oh. It's right in the middle of your screen. That if you do that, and then if you hover over the bottom of that window, and um, like on the oh, on the okay, edge of the window, we try to expand it this way. Oh, there we go. Okay. Um, I see what's happening. And you might have to make the uh, the, the the animation window 
that black bar at the bottom, if you hover over the up up a little bit. No, actually the one the one between that's uh, yeah, there you go. There we go. There we go. Keep going, keep going, keep going. There we go. Perfect. Okay. Uh, it's gonna be a bit awkward to see, but um hopefully we can see. So this is what's known as a blend space. And and there's there's a couple of different types of blend spaces. And what this does is this lets you blend animations together. Um we don't unfortunately have any that we can use. So we're going to have to build some, um, at least for the start animations. Now, the way this works, if you hold down shift and move your mouse all over this box, you can see that the animations change. Oh, yeah, she's leaning around. Yep. So the up and down axis, um, so from top to bottom, that, that covers the, the angle. So if you imagine that when you go to the top, you're running uphill and when you go down to the bottom, you're running downhill. You can see how her weight shifts um, on her feet from forward to back. So she's still running forward. So she's running forward the whole time here. Left and right are the leans. So you can see how she leans to the side um, for it. So what this, this what this blend space does is basically takes uh, what's it got there? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, nine. But it's actually not nine. It's like six or something. Six different animations, and it pulls them all together. Um, into like a set um, of animations so um this is like a blend space so what we can do is we can use something like this to control our stops so what we're going to do mongoose is we need to close this window and we need to close uh or we can yeah we just we'll just close this and then close the anim blueprint we're very quickly going to go make a blend space okay so we need to go make our own blend space if you go into the animations folder because we are about to make an animation um and then there's a folder called blend spaces i think it's the second folder on the left okay, there we go i'm going to blend spaces okay so here we have um what do we have okay going to go into jog combat 1d for a second i think we can use that we can't use it now but we can use it later there we go and then do your shift thing and move back and forth oh no this is what the what the what is this no oh. oh okay so we're back um and uh, i was gonna say i said to mongoose that, like what in, in the cut like if your unreal engine editor does crash it's fine it's perfectly normal um save regularly save frequently if you've done a lot of work in your project and you're, you don't want to go make changes take backups do go into your folders do all that uh, but if it crashes don't worry you probably didn't do something wrong um if you actually go back into uh, animations, mongoose, um, go back into your animations and go back into blend spaces. Oh, yep, yeah, still the. Uh, yeah, working this tight. I know it's working on this this screen, so everyone can see. Doesn't make it easy. This is pretty much what all the Unreal live streams look like. Go back in. So that jaw combat one D. Do not go back into it. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. <gasps> <laughs> close it close it it's fine it's fine you can open it and do it um, uh, actually if you double click it but be like double click it expand it but then don't do anything else expand it out and hopefully this doesn't so yeah so the reason this crashes do you see those red markers on that line don't go anywhere near them just look no right those red those red <laughs> markers are missing animation assets so, it's sort of telling you that there's a problem with those animations okay i don't know what it have to go and dig but that's why it crashed i feel like i'm on a minefield right now so yeah so i just close that mongoose. just go up and just close that and then just don't use that one okay so we're gonna create our own blend space to handle start animation so if you right click and i'll cut it off here be sure to tune in next week as we continue to try to make these assets work okay everybody welcome back from tech time i hope you guys enjoyed it i tried to keep it again under about 10 minutes so uh we're gonna move on now to the topic for discussion which is the effects of sound design on overall player immersion. I thought this would be a good topic to discuss since we got Tricolor with us today. And uh, Tricolor, what, um, why don't you get us started on this? Why don't you, why don't you let us know from the uh, sound designer's uh, perspective here? Well, you know, everyone's always going to say that their part is the most important to game design, but my part's the most important <laughs> to game, <laughs> game design. <laughs> um, uh my mantra is like if they can if they notice the sound design you're doing it wrong like if they're like oh this sounds terrible then you're not this isn't 
you're supposed to be unnoticed. That's like the best way you can do sound design. But uh, if we're talking about player impact, like every action has to have a audio feedback. So like even if they're clicking, even if it doesn't do anything, they're just clicking. You need they need to hear it. Um, well, I, I did that panel on a uh, sound design over at Colossal Con, and a, bit, a lot of the questions was like, so, so like how do how do how does voice acting work? I'm like, that's not the important part. The important part is, are they even gonna hear it? <laughs> like, I, I, like if if it's drowned out in a team fight, there was no point for those lines to even be there. So timing and implementation are some of the most important parts of sound design. Um, a lot of it is foley work, like going out and hitting things together and hoping that you get a sound that you can somehow morph into in a an appropriate sound effect like malware's basic attacking is a bow and arrow sounds but chip crush to sound 8-bit so um it's so you like mentally associate that with a bow and arrow which is what he has but it sounds like very crunchy and game boy color e so <laughs> um when uh, I'm, i was working on that dark star karma voice pack um it, it helps to play or at least be like familiar with the character that you're you're working on because there are power highs, there are power lows, there are certain things that the character does that are more important than others, and you had to be familiar with those while you're designing a character. Even even not just sound design, like art assets and stuff like that. It's very very important. So Karma has like a a, a tether where she like attaches herself to somebody, and after a delay, she roots them right, but she has to keep up with them. And it looks like a draining kind of effect because she's connected to them. Um, when I was doing the Dark Star Karma voice pack, something that I thought would be really cool is if when she attaches to somebody, you hear the echo that's normally present in her voice, but it goes down in pitch to signify that she's like draining from them. Like she's like attaching herself to them physically. Um, basic attack lines like, you know, you're, they're called uh, action exertion noises or vamping noises where they go like, huh, 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 like basic stuff like that typically don't have as much effects on them because that causes audio noise um in most audio engines a sound a sound file cannot play until until one is done so if you have like if if, if they basic attack and you, you hear huh and it has like a lot of echo then it's going to take an eternity for that line to finish and for the next one to begin you see what i mean yeah. um i'm not really familiar with how unity audio engines work i let um mikhail over the programming uh sweet deal with that but um in a leagues engine and in a lot of other engines like overwatch's engine sound files can't play on top of each other so like um managing it's like a printer queue you know what i mean like uh, one has to happen before the next and managing that kind of uh order is super super important um you also don't want to overload your players like a big big problem in league of legends right now is that voice files are not working the way they're supposed to and i can't fix that sorry guys <laughs> but um some characters just speak way too much or they're way too loud or they say the same line over and over and over and over and over again. Um, and that can be very frustrating for players because they have over 900 voice lines, but they're <coughs> only hearing three, you know? And, and you're and not to mention that you put up resources and money into hiring a voice actor to voice these lines. So proper implementation is like the first step. And then the second step is finding a right sound for the character. You have to associate um the character with a certain like not even just like a feeling and not even just a sound but like a feeling so like for noxus she has like a oh, like an angel chorus in all of her voice lines and i'm doing sfx work for her right now and like a big thing that I, i'm like really latching onto her is like um uh not wind chimes but like when you take like a glass bowl and you hit it and it goes you know, you okay, know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's something i'm really into with her and then malware of course is the uh, I'm, I'm trying to do like a sort of dark 8-bit kind of feel, but it's really hard to make 8-bit not feel cartoony. So a lot of it is like bit crushed beyond recognition and it sounds really crunchy and like uh, disturbing. <laughs> but um, uh, but something that is uh, animation needs to come first and then sound effects and voice lines because you can't time things or get the right into intonation or uh, inflection without animations and if you do it before the animations are done or you lock in on something like hardcore before the animation is done it will all be uh misaligned nobody likes that that is like the worst feeling in the world <laughs> like when, when when your character winds up or something and the voice line plays before or after the action mm -hmm. it's, it's so it's so like uh, frustrating 
but yeah, um, game uh, sound design is like really, 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 really important, and I th- kind of think it's overlooked. Like I know everyone thinks it's overlooked, but I think it's really overlooked. <laughs> yeah, it's well, a, I think. Go ahead, Mandy. Oh, I was just gonna say it's so interesting that the first thing you said was the the best sound design goes unnoticed because I actually didn't notice and appreciate how good the sound design in Paragon was until, and this isn't a knock on uh, on um, the alpha for Predecessor, but obviously it's an alpha. They don't have all those kind of final touches in there. So until I played a game that didn't have all those little like touches, it was like, oh, wow. Yeah, th- it, it makes a difference. It Not only in immersion, but like you were saying, every little thing you do, whether you were locking in a card or um, there was a ping on the map, or you um, killed a minion, there was kind of like these confirmational sounds that there's so much going on. Those sounds really help you know what's going on in all of the all of the clamor, you know, uh, and that's just kind of underneath the more important things like um, the ability sounds and, and even voice lines and things like that. So I thought it was so interesting because I, I had taken some notes before the show so I could really kind of like have my thoughts gathered of for this discussion and everything you said was like a note that i had kind of written down like oh it's <laughs> just i just thought that was really really interesting so i was kind of like itching to talk so i was like yeah 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 you're right <laughs> <laughs> it, it really does break player immersion if like the sound effect goes off way after something oh, yeah. ha- the animation happens or way before the animation happens and it's just it's terrible i thought paragon did a great job with it and um Another thing you kind of you kind of hit on there, Tricolor, that is, is getting the correct sort of feel for each hero. Um, like uh, Feng Mao, you know, you had kind of that crang clang sound whenever yeah. he, he hit with the uh, spear. I thought that was really cool. I, th- I think you could go the other way with that and have like sort of a squelchy meat tearing sound, like he's actually cutting somebody with a spear. I think a lot of people would love that, but for the most part, that would be very off-putting if it actually sounded like he was <laughs> slicing someone with a spear every time. So I think they went the right route there, you know, kind of a clang sort of metal on metal sound every time with his um, spear animations. Um, but yeah, I think I really think sound design was is very important. It's, and I've said it from the big, from the beginning, well, from the end of Paragon, I should say, that it, that's, that's one of the things that made Paragon special is that everything tied into each other. And like a Richter hook, it sounded really good. It looked really good. Whenever you got hit with it, you know, your camera shook a little bit. It was very disorienting. And I think as well, it should be. And then um, some of the other things like... Uh, like when your sound dampens whenever you get hit by certain abilities, like when you're stunned or whatever, mm-hmm. it kind of sounds like you're underwater. I always thought that was kind of cool. How do you, how do you do that, Tricolor? Um, you mean like um like muffling sounds when you get hit by things? Right. Yeah. So there are there are there are certain cutoff filters in like the sound design world, and there are things called high pass filters and low pass filters. A low pass filter lets low frequencies pass through. So if um, you're stunned or CC'd, you're going to apply a low pass filter to your environment. So you're only going to hear the low frequencies. It's like uh, walls are natural low pass filters, like drywalls in a lot of apartments. So that's why whenever someone's playing music next door, all you hear is the doom, 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 because it's letting the low frequencies through, but cutting out the high ones. And that's a, um, it's very disorienting and very like, uh, I'm... I am uh, restrained or cc'd in some sort of way because I can't hear everything. I can only hear the uh, low frequencies. So that's a that's a that's how they do that in the sound design world. Um, there's also like I thought Aurora's sound design was very very good, um, mostly because all of hers had, like you said, like a, if you if you were pe- playing against Aurora, you heard that low pass filter a lot. Yeah. <laughs> and if, uh, <laughs> I liked how all of her abilities had a delayed, most of her abilities, I mean, had a delayed sound effect, like cryosism, like her ult, she would send out that pulse of ice and then it would slowly freeze everyone. Like, I love that because it's like, hey, did anything happen? Oh, there it is. Oh, no. Like, <laughs> <laughs> it, but, um, and it had an escalating ice popping effect associated oh, yes. with it, too, which was nice. Oh, it's like candy for my ears. <laughs> I, uh, I always thought... Um, <laughs> Moragesh had a really interesting yes. with with her feet. It sounded like bare feet padding Ooh, yeah, on the yeah. ground. Like it and it sounded different from like when FaZe would run where it sounded like someone wearing like shoes or boots. And um her her hive ability, it sounded like 
you know, like bugs. Like, <laughs> it was really cool. And whenever she Can whipped her knife, too, phase? there was like a... Yeah. Oh, you want to talk about phase? Let's talk about phase. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Uh-oh. Uh-oh, did I hit... I love Faze. Like, I completely forgot about her. Like, when we were talking about our favorite Paragon, <laughs> I can't believe I forgot about my girl. I can't believe. Aww, I, I just love her so much. Like, she had those EDM beats in her tether. Mm -hmm. Everything was like, she sounded kind of like an iPhone interface because it was like, like, it was like, there was a lot of like, oh. like clicking sounds because it sounded very modern. I liked it, but it was dampened yeah. and like echoed. So it sounded really cool. Paragon sound design was so good, everybody. It really was. <laughs> Sorry, I'm like nerding out over here. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's stuff yeah. I, I, that's stuff that would add to my immersion. However, I would never notice it. I never would have noticed any of that. But that's yeah, you're exactly absolutely how right. Felt, yeah. I'm hyper-focused on it. So <laughs> right, I'm yeah. like, uh, everyone's like, hey, did you see this new this new champion? And I'm like, mm, they sound like crap. Yeah, they sound like crap. <laughs> they don't that's look like so crap. That's so funny. Like <laughs> oh, I love it. That's awesome. What about uh, announcer packs? Um, like uh, like how, how they're different from in-game voice, uh, like yeah. in-game voices yeah. and stuff? Mm -hmm. Um. Well, in general, you're going to have to tone down a lot of the effects. Like, you're going to have to somehow differentiate the announcer from... Like, like if you're playing as, for instance, malware, and there's a malware announcer pack, you need to be able to differentiate which malware is talking. You know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. it, like is it the player? Is it the malware you're playing as? Or is it the announcer malware? So, like, if I, like, if I were to do an announcer pack that of a character that is playable in the game, I would usually, like, I would make them louder than the player character and I would pull back on the effects and echoes just a little bit to make it so that's the first thing you hear they're more understandable um and that's effects typically um I know in league they're stored in like a totally different location so they're not even anywhere near the voiceover files um uh there's this there was this craze back in the day I know for MOBAs I don't know if this still holds true but uh all the announcers were like slightly British females and now they're all deep males. So I don't know what's happening. You know what? You're right. You're absolutely <laughs> so right. True. But um, uh, I, for the announcer for, uh, for Ethereal that I still, I'm like, I can't decide. There's so many cool like options for announcers because it can be literally anything you want. It could be like a clean female robot vocal. It could be an evil robot vocal. It could be um, like a really deep like demon it could be so many things because it's a non-corporeal entity that's supposed to be narrating the the game so i think the announcer is probably going to be like one of the last things we finish because uh i want to i kind of personally me i want to make sure it, it like kind of unifies everyone together and doesn't sound like any one character in the game uh, 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 for pre-alpha anyway because apparently there's gonna be like 32 characters and i cannot wait <laughs> <laughs> but um was did that answer your question Oh uh, yeah, awesome. yeah. It's brought up some in interesting points. Um, man, it's, I'm really like I'm really enjoying talking to you, Tricolor, because it's, <laughs> it's a you. lot of stuff that I didn't know, and I like learning <laughs> about these things. Yeah, this has definitely been really. That's and that's funny that you brought up of the slightly British female versus the deep, you know, ma man manly voice. Um, when Meta Buff initially released their announcer voice packs, the first one they released was kind of a you know the high pitched female voice, and people went ballistic they didn't like it at all they're like oh we want the paragon announcer pack back so they had to they kind of had to make a, a, a another announcer pack that was sort of a deeper masculine voice um I, it really matters to people you know sound design definitely matters to people well you're going to be hearing that announcer every day every yeah. time you play so it's got to be one you like <clears throat> um i think i think the reason why people stopped using the british lady is because league of legends is the british lady and uh there could be only one <laughs> British lady. <laughs> um I really liked Paragon's announcer because like mm -hmm. uh he sounded like he was uh like out of this world. You know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. he was like, I am super bored with all of this, but I'm gonna narrate it because I love watching you guys kill each other. <laughs> so <laughs> I like I like the announcer a lot. Um I also liked how it had he had a stereoscopic audio so it played in both headphones separately as compared to like how the characters in game would play in both headphones at the same time so whenever you would hear the announcer it kind of like rotated between your headphones really fast mm. with like a chorus effect i yeah. don't know if anyone like picked up on that but that nope. that was like that, 
that's like another way to like be like oh this is an announcer that's happening because it's like chorusy and it's way different yeah. quality it has a different it's not it feels like it's not in the game it feels like it's in your headphones yeah not speakers. until you said that did i notice that because i went back and watched some old paragon gameplay so i could like remember what the thing sounded like and it's funny that you say that because I, I noticed that I didn't notice I was noticing it until you just said it just now that, yeah, there was that kind of like chorusy feel or sound to, um, to the announcer when he would say things, you knew it was him and mm -hmm. not just by his voice. It was, yeah. like, it just sounded different from the rest of the game. One of the community suggestions we had on an episode a long time back, I of course have no idea which episode it was, um, was, the ability to record your own announcer packs and then import them into the game. How hard would that be? So in Unreal, I I don't know if Unreal like compresses or converts voice files, but in a lot of game engines, they use a um, proprietary in, uh, audio engine. So it doesn't come with the game engine you're working with. The, the most popular one right now is called WYS. It's made by Audio Kinetic and that's the one League uses. I'm pretty sure um smite uses that one and paladins uses that one and uh battleborn used that one before you know it died uh, <laughs> uh so it it's easy if you provide them the tools to do it um there's a lot of potential for like little kinds of like software incompatibilities windows architecture incompatibilities um the if if you were to just record your own voice pack or or announcer and like export them all in WAV files like there's a lot of it depends on how big the announcer pack is so let's say it's like 50 lines that's not very big you would have to record them and then if you wanted effects or audio cleanup or anything you'd have to do that then you would have to split the lines into <clears throat> each segment like you'd have to go in and like isolate pentakill isolate double kill and like export that um depending on how the engine works it might hash the voice files into numbers um game engines don't read letters a lot of them don't read letters a lot of them convert um letters into numbers because it's easier for computers to read so instead of it being like a uh, solo kill or double kill it's like 0x535258 eba <laughs> and that's really hard for people to keep track of um <laughs> there's also the how would you regulate that sort of thing like is it on the steam workshop can everyone download it is it just you is it client side is it server side like if it's client side then only you can hear it and if it's server side that means the server has to load all that and what's stopping someone from uploading a 60 gig voice pack a 60 gig announcer pack forcing the server to handle it and then everyone has to sit in the loading screen for like three hours because because <laughs> it's 60 gigs <laughs> um so it's it it's it sounds like a really good idea on paper you know what i mean but um there are a lot of hurdles in implementation um i can see I can see Unreal handling it a lot better than a lot of other engines would, be simply because um, Unreal is very open. You could probably provide like a tool for splitting it. Like you could do a uh, queue recording, so it'd be like record this, press R, save it. Record this, press R, save it. Um, that sort of thing. But again, like Unreal only takes 16-bit, 44,000 hertz WAV files, uh, not MP3 files. A lot of people use MP3 files. So yeah, it, it's it is doable, but it requires a lot of end user hassle and work. So they'd have to want it. Mm. You know what I mean? Yeah. And there would have to be like um, things in place to prevent abuse of that system and like standard setup and all that sort of uh, all that sort of stuff. Yeah, that makes sense. It's um, and honestly, announcer packs kind of fall on the developers. Like they're not very hard to make. Because um, they all follow the same basic template, like you know, two solo kill lines, two double kill lines, a penta kill line, that kind of thing. Um, and as long as you have the actors in the studio, like what's, you know, fork over that extra money for that the few those like fifty extra lines, and you know, then charge charge money for it, like charge two bucks for it, like it's easy peasy. Um, but yeah, I I think. And, and like another thing is like the ethics of it. Like, what if someone like makes a voice pack that's super racist or super like offensive and. I don't know. I think that I think chances of that are very small, but you know, the internet <laughs> people yeah. do all sorts of things. I think the chances of that are very high if it's <laughs> server side. Oh, and uh, there's also proprietary problems. Like, what if someone like uh, makes like a like a SpongeBob SquarePants announcer pack where they take clips from the show yeah. and they mm. put it in exact, and then you know, then you have lawyers on us and then lawyers on them 
So it's just, it's a good idea in theory, but in practice, it just would not work. Good to go. Thanks for uh, crushing my hopes and dreams. That's uh... I'm so sorry. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. That's interesting. <laughs> so, um, do you guys have anything else you wanted to say on the uh, on the topic for discussion? I think I got everything that I wanted to say. All right. I am all talked out. <laughs> all Aww. talked out. Oh, he's all tuckered. <laughs> so let's move on. Uh, community builder this week. This guy, uh, it's uh, two house phones. Mandy introduced me to him. He is absolutely hilarious. Has nothing to do with Paragon or anything we talk about on the show, but he's just a funny dude that I think you uh, you should check out. And I'm all about you know cluing, cluing you guys into something that might be fun and interesting. And he certainly is fun and interesting. So. <laughs> <laughs> check out two house phones if you haven't already i'll have his uh, youtube channel linked in the description below so <laughs> thank you mandy thank you for introducing me to him because he is really funny no problem yeah i have never i guarantee if you don't laugh watching his videos you get your money that's that's my guarantee <laughs> get your money back <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so let's move on to plugs mandy you got anything to plug this week um let's see uh I think the last video I did was out last week. I, I can't remember, but if you haven't watched it, go watch it, uh, please. <laughs> um, other than that, I've still just been streaming over on Twitch. Um, so yeah, that's that. Check out Mandy's Instagram. Oh yeah, check out my Instagram. Oh, that's the gram. <laughs> the gram. There's some truly... My whole, my whole shtick is I'm very mediocre. So if you like mediocre, you're gonna love me. You're gonna love me. I follow is a Furby Instagram. <laughs> The Furby ones. The Furby. Tricolor, you got anything to plug? Uh, oh yeah, uh, the my Dark Star Karma voice yep. pack is yeah coming out today. Uh, anyone who comments on the video is actually going to be interested in giveaway for the skin and the icon. I don't know if you guys play League, but you should totally do. Yeah. Whoa, <laughs> um, very it's exciting. Free. It's um, it works with all regions. That's a new. That's a new function, darling. So, uh, um, yeah, so go ahead and check that out, please. I will have that link down in the description below, of course, as well as uh, Tricolor's Twitter. And uh, anything else you want me to link? Uh, nope. All right, cool. Um, I actually have something to plug this week. Uh, I did two new T-shirt designs. Um, the first one is just a basic uh, mangoose, just my logo on the front. It says mangoose on the back. The other one, though, the barbarian goose is pretty sweet. Uh, I'll show the... I'll put a picture of that up there, so I'll put the links down in the description below if you guys want to grab one. I'm definitely going to get one myself. It's probably one of my favorite designs I've ever made, ever. So <laughs> that's it for my plugs. Um, thanks for coming out and enjoying the show with us this week. Uh, thank you very much, Mandy, and thank you. Thank you so much, Tricolor, for coming out. You're such an interesting guest. Thank you. Uh, I just I really want to have you back again, man. That was... Uh, <laughs> It was a great show, I think. I hope uh, I hope everybody out there enjoyed it. But for now, this is the For the Minions team signing off. You guys have a good one. Mandy Goose! Mandy, you look like you just got done shooting a commercial for Totino's Pizza Rolls. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not going to dignify that. <laughs> I'm not kidding. I will go change. <laughs> What's wrong? What's wrong with my kitty cat shirt? Nothing I wrong with your kitty cat shirt. I, think I bought this in the little boy section at Walmart. So how could how could I look like a mom? <laughs> Are you shopping for your son at the same time? No, I just like they have better selection. Okay, I don't like to wear girl clothes. God damn you both! <laughs> one for you and one for me. <laughs> God, I shouldn't admit this, but sometimes I wear his clothes. <laughs> oh <my God>. What? <laughs> they have they have cool clothes. Mm. Okay. Okay. This, this show took a weird turn, but, no, but that's okay. It is okay. It's I mean, okay. for what little I know about women's fashion, it the uh, women's clothing tends to have pockets that don't function. So I completely understand. Not what <laughs> right? with that. that is the bane of my existence. I will never understand fake pockets. It's because you Makes got a pocketbook. No... It's the aesthetic. A pocketbook. Ew. I don't carry a pocketbook. I carry a backpack. <laughs> <laughs> right now, it looks like you carry one of those giant purses. <sighs>
Mm-hmm. Where there's like a child lost at the bottom of it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you look like the kind of person I could ask for a Tic Tac. Oh my god. <laughs> I'm leaving. <laughs> I'm having so much fun right now. I quit. I'm not doing this show anymore. What a dynamic. I quit. 